whether you're an employee of West Her or a vendor partner of West Her, I'm going to treat you the same way. Right. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm very like old school in the sense of like, if I believe that you care about the account and you're thorough and diligent and disciplined, no different than I would expect my employee to be, um, you're good with me. But if I, if I believe that you're coasting, taking advantage, uh, you know, not treating West Her with the credibility it deserves or the respect it deserves, whatever, um, then you're probably going to be out of luck soon. Right. Um, so that's kind of, it's for me, it's all people game. And, you know, I've, I, I switched companies from uh, a reputation management service to another one, um, only because I like the founder of the other one, uh, shout out to Matt Murray, wide whale. Um, but I switched from some other company that was arguably the same. It was basically the same fee. They do the same thing, right, but I switched right. because I valued him as a person. I enjoy his startup story and I was just, that's why I changed. Right. So I wouldn't even say go so far to say the other vendor did anything wrong. Right. It was just the people connection was stronger for this other partner. So, you know, that's a big driving force for somebody like me. Awesome. Yeah, especially you especially oh, at scale. Yeah, I'd like to throw something out there at yeah. that one. Um, that's a, Matt, that's such a great point. I love what you said too about them, you know, coasting versus like giving it your all. I had a uh, I had a coaching combo with a dealer on this topic because he was really struggling with a few of their vendor partners. And uh, it led to kind of, we came up with a, a vendor vetting process. And uh, so it, we came up with like 11 questions to explore when you're, when you're either vetting a vendor or you want to take a look at some of the vendors you, exist, you currently have. So like a few of the questions are number one, like, can you give me a solid example of when your company put its dealerships ahead of its own well-being? Um, a lot of times, you know, a company will do that, especially with like what happened with COVID. You know, I, I feel like there, that was an opportunity for vendors to really step up and do something. Um, and then another one, like um, if, if you found out information, if you found information that would help the, and benefit the dealership, but potentially get you fired, how would you handle it? That's another one, a good one that we came up with that from that convo. And then um, uh, this one's important too. I think a lot of the best, and I'm not saying this is the case in every, every situation, but just like your guys' software uh, who develop, you know, a lot of, I think the best tools are often developed at the dealership level by the dealership people. So I, I like to ask who, who developed your software systems and processes and what was their track record for success on the showroom floor? Uh, and then you can kind of find out from there, you know, were they, were, were these people, are these people that really understand the car business? Um, and, so and Sean, I really just, like, those are all cool questions. I really, really like that. Um, I will draw a parallel though, to like hiring people and interviewing people. Sometimes people interview really well, yeah. Yes. you know, and then they're duds. Yeah. Sometimes people interview terribly and they're the best employees, best teammates, best people ever. So, you know, it's so funny. I'm, I'm, I'm way more interested in trying to just make that human connection yeah. and then give people a chance. And then I want to be accountable to myself too. Like if a vendor partner's failing, like, have I not done what I needed to do to like help that connection? Um, you know, at least, at least be honest about it or, or, or vulnerable about it. Um, cause sometimes I think in our business, egos get in the way a little bit, um, you know, or like an, a brand new, you know, general manager gets appointed to a store or whatever, and they want to do it their way. And, you know, they're, they're determined to make a mark, you know, and then they, so I don't know, like a lot of different ways to, to approach the business, I think, but we're all human. Like, and I always circle back to that, like at the end of the day, we're all just trying to, you know, add value, do good, do good. We got a great industry to work within. And, um, you know, respect is a, is a thing that everybody's owed, regardless of your financial status in the world. Um, I think that's a really important point, you know? 